So I will do the College of Complexes. Um, tonight's topic will be a debate between Michael Kazanjian and Paul Racino uh, on uh, the premise, are all religions the same? Um, the way the college operates, we start off with announcements, then we will have the debate. Tonight's debate will be um, two rounds, ten minutes each, followed by a final round, five minutes each. Then we'll have a question and answer period, uh, questions and in a question mark, not an explanation point or a period. And then finally we have our infamous rebuttal session, which um, allows um, anyone from the audience who wants to come up and give their own talk uh, to talk, with the final rebuttals being from our presenters. Uh, there's two rules at the college. Number one is no personal attacks, and the other is one fool at a time. Uh, and also, uh, we have a tuition of $3. Uh, so if you haven't paid $3, so please uh, contact Don Ritchie. I will signal each speaker three minutes, two minutes, one minute, and at the end of the speech, speech, I'll give a quick sign like this. At the end of 30 seconds, we're going over. I'll have a small electronic air horn to remind you. But only if it's like 30 seconds over the allotted time. Again, three minutes, two minutes, one minute, done. No more announcements. It's time to start the debate. Uh, arguing for the proposition. Um, religions are all the same will be Michael Kazanjian. He teaches philosophy and religion at Dryden College. He has a master's in philosophy at DePaul University. Uh, debating that proposition is Paul Racino, who has a master's in computer engineering from the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, and a master's in telecommunications from DePaul University. Uh, he is a lifelong Christian and he works as a computer technician. Uh, right now, Mike, you argue the uh, affirmative, and uh, you have ten minutes. Let's begin with a prayer. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> okay, can everybody hear me? Yes, I bet you can hear me. Yes. All right, and uh, my position is that religions are it is the same in a sense. Uh, notice the semi. Uh, notice the colon there. The um, in a sense means that religions uh, are in a sense the same and in a sense uh, different. Uh, three of, uh, two anthropologists, Clyde Cleckholm and Henry, Henry Murray, have written that all people are in a sense the same, um, in a sense uh, somewhat different and in a sense unique. Um, what I have done is uh, interpret that uh, through my research and teaching is that uh, all religions are in a sense the same, in a sense somewhat different, and in a sense unique. Uh, the PowerPoint is not here, so I hope everybody um, has uh, a copy of the handouts that uh, you can follow me with. Um, the second slide, which, it, which would have been the second slide in the uh, PowerPoint, a general definition of religion. Uh, first, religion, according to Marcia Eliotti, who taught at the University of Chicago, um, is that religion concerns the real, that is to say, God, the gods, any kind of general spirituality, amid secularity, change, history, time, space, matter, mortality. In other words, religion, in a broadest sense, uh, means uh, that uh, there is something that we're seeking <coughs> because we find ourselves mortal, because we find uh, that life is uh, perishing, and therefore we need something uh, beyond ourselves, uh, something that uh, uh, is not spatio-temporal as such. Now this reality, um, according to Rudolf Otto, uh, is the holy. Uh, that would mean that in religion we have something which is fundamentally or at least generally ineffable. Uh, religion is something about which we can't really say very much, if anything at all. Uh, religion is, to quote Otto, religion is that which grows out of and gives expression to 
the experience of the holy in its various aspects. Uh, when you hold a religious text in your hand, it is different from holding a chemistry text in your hand. Uh, the chemistry text um, you might put anywhere, uh, on the floor, on a table, on a chair, anywhere. A religious text representing uh, spirituality or God or gods, anything real, has to be dealt with with um, much greater respect than, let's say, a chemistry text. Reality and derived reality. Um, here we have uh, what is called the theology of culture, which deals with the religious dimensions of the uh, secular um, for religion, for theologians and anthropologists, and for Mercy Aliotti, and, and, and many other uh, theologians and philosophers. Um, God and spirituality cannot be simply restricted to something that we do on a specific day, such as on the Sabbath that there is a religious dimension um, of all things, a religious dimension in all secularity, um, and therefore, um, if you respect the earth, you are in a sense religion. Uh, if you respect ecology, you are in a sense religious. Therefore, uh, does this mean that everything around us is in a sense religious? Yes, and that means that um, the major religions of the world therefore uh, tend to have this uh, constraint or this ethical view uh, that we have to respect all aspects of life. Um, this brings us to uh, the concept also of the um, relationship between religion and the secular, religion and the world. And this, uh, on the final page of your um, handout, if reality, in general, if spirituality, if God or the gods, um, any kind of ultimate reality is um, out there for you to seek, what the, how does religion then um, from time to time relate to us mortals? So in most religions that we find, the nine or ten major mainstream religions that we find, the Zoroastrians, uh, Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Mahayana Buddhism, Hinayana Buddhism, Taoism, particularly later Taoism, Jainism, Confucianism, Islam, and Shinto. In each one of these, either initially or in time, uh, there is a mediator, some kind of messenger, someone who the spirituality will send to save or help or redeem mortal human beings. The assumption is that mortal human beings are imperfect and can stray from the word of God, from the word of the gods, that mortal human beings fail. We fail as human beings and therefore uh, God sends what God interprets as um, a savior, a messiah, a redeemer, um, any kind of uh, uh, person, a, generally a non-human, uh, is sent to save people who are mortal. So, uh, for the Zoroastrians, there's the um, Shayo Shant. For Judaism, the Messiah will come. For Christianity, the Messiah as Christ has come. Um, generally, in um, Hinduism, which is uh, the world's oldest, I believe most diverse religions, uh, we have uh, Vishnu or the avatars who are sent to earth to help humanity. In um, Buddhism, in Mahayana Buddhism, we have the Bodhisattva ideal. In um, Hinayana Buddhism, we have the Arhat ideal. Um, in Taoism and in Confucianism, which many people will interpret as atheism or at least non-theism, uh, there's been such an impact made on uh, people, on civilizations, that many people, many scholars, automatically include uh, the um, idea of the Taoist, um, um, or rather the Buddhist uh, Bodhisattva. So in, um, in Taoism and Confucianism, in the later uh, view, because of their influence, by Buddhism, uh, we have the Bodhisattva or the Arhat ideal. 
in Jainism, we have the Tirthankara. Um, again, messengers or angels or mediators who come to Earth uh, in order to uh, save or help uh, humanity. Uh, so we have common in all religions, and virtually in all religions, uh, the idea that there is a spirituality, uh, there is a god or the gods, uh, there is nirvana, but in order for um, us to also feel um, oneness um, with the spirituality, in order for us to um, um, seek God in our mortal way, there is this mediator who comes in to help us because the mediator uh, is there to do for us what we presumably cannot do for ourselves. Thank you. Okay. There was a monk, a philosopher, and a Catholic priest walking down the road, and they came upon a small farm boy, and they started talking with the boy, and then they saw a chicken walking across the road. And the monk goes, ah, oh, the chicken is out exploring his reality and developing his version of life. The philosopher said, Ah, the chicken is out experiencing nature and enjoying the beauty of nature. The Catholic priest said, Ah, the, the, the chicken is out following the predetermined will of God and going according to, living according to God's will. The little boy said, I just left the door open on a chicken coop. <laughs> and we all know that the chicken crossed the road to lay it on the line. And that's what I'm here to do tonight, lay it on the line. <laughs> as, a, as a Christian my whole life, I've heard many, 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 many things said against the Christian religion. To me, the premise that all religions are the same is the most preposterous to the things they say against the Christian religion. The premise they put forth because the, the God of Christianity, Yahweh or Jehovah or whatever you want to call him, the Lord they use now in all caps, has told us that it's his way or the highway. And a lot of people do not like that kind of um, totalitarianism. You know, People want choices. They say, you know, nothing is real. Uh, there's no absolutes, etc., etc., etc. My problem with that is, if you believe, if you believe that all religions are the same, I challenge you to go to any Islamic state and proclaim to them that Islam and Allah is the same religion and the same God as any other religion. And if you live through the experience, I would be very surprised because you just committed blasphemy against Allah and any good Muslim would put you in your place, which would be about six feet under. If you look, if you seriously look at religions, there's no way you can really say they are the same. I will grant, as my opponent said, in essence, religions are the same. Charles Stanley, Dr. Charles Stanley has often said, inside of each one of us is a God-shaped hole. Whatever you decide to fill it with is your choice. Be it the true God of Christianity, or whatever else. And all these other religions are there as alternatives of how you can fill that space in your life. Also,
when you look at Christianity and compare it to any other religion, there are many stark differences. The most obvious one being, in any other religion other than Christianity, you must do something to earn your salvation. You must do good works. You must do whatever. In Christianity, you don't have to do anything. The work has already been done for you in the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And, um, the, and your salvation is a gift for God, not something you earn. And even as, even if you look at the list given here, you can see obvious differences between the religions listed. <clears throat> there are many similarities between different religions. And as, as the other speaker said, and as I've agreed to, it fills a need in our life. We have a need to have some authority, something that we live for. But it's not the same in all religions, because if it were the same, why have so many different religions? Why don't we just roll them all up into one? if there's so much the same. <coughs> I've heard, I've, I've never heard someone argue the position, I've just heard it stated. And it, um, to me, I, I, I just can't understand. But I understand that a lot of people want to say, you know, there's no absolutes, it's too binding, it's too much. And that's the whole point of Christianity is we can't do it on our own. We need God to help us. We need, we need the Messiah, the Savior, to come and help us. But for someone to tell me that, that Buddhism or any other Islam or any other religion is the same as Christianity, I cannot accept that. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm going to extend the time to 12 minutes because both of you had less than, went less than eight. So we'll allow a little extra time now. Okay. For some. Uh, three basic points here. Um, the question of um, if you uh, ask uh, people in um, one religion uh, what they think of uh, another, you're going to have a great deal of uh, conflicts. Yes, uh, religions are the same in a sense, in a very basic um, uh, structural sense. They believe in uh, a higher power. But they are, as the anthropologist said, in a sense, very different. These differences um, are not only among religions, for example, Islam and Christianity, uh, they are existing also within fragments and um, within factions, within religions, such as Sunni and Shiite. Uh, you have people within religions um, actually killing each other simply because one is one interpretation of your religion and another one uh, is uh, another interpretation. We can see this on the world scene. Uh, this is what uh, gives uh, political theorists, international relations experts um, uh, such a headache because um, with, if they are dealing with a person of another religion, they also have to see that the other religion is not monolithic, so religions split within themselves in terms of cultural and other political ideological differences. Uh, secondly, Christians, um, my opponent has said, um, don't have to do any work, I believe. The fact is that within um, 
many religions, uh, there is a mission statement, um, and within Christianity, um, Christ has done things for you. However, uh, Jesus has said in the Christian scripture, uh, heal the sick, um, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Uh, and if you do not follow those precepts, which actually uh, more or less go back to the Judaic heritage of Christianity, then um, um, Jesus becomes angry at you and says, why are you sitting there putting your candle, hiding your candle under a bush and not doing anything? So there is a uh, mission statement uh, definitely within Christianity. And um, uh, the feeling that uh, I've, I've had many of my students at Triton ask me this when I thought compared to religions or world religions, why aren't we all the same? Um, there, uh, theoretically, is the Baha'i religion, uh, which has attempted, which attempts to say that they are um, a combination or a culmination of all religions. And in fact, um, uh, in some cases, uh, in the Baha'i faith, if you um, attend their services, um, you find that they are completely open, uh, in many instances, to scripture from other religions. Um, and uh, so if you want a culmination of religion, if you want an evolution of specific religions going into um, a monolithic form, um, one very good example of that would be the uh, Baha'i religion, um, uh, which was uh, founded uh, by their founder, uh, Baha'u'llah. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Christians need to do good deeds, but the good deeds are not a requirement to receive the gift from God of your salvation. The good deeds are done in response. Jesus also said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, which applies directly into this. But it also, the Bible also states, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. There is no mention of people doing any good deeds to earn it. It's a gift. And in response to God's gift, that is why we go out and do good things for others as a, and, and also as a means of evangelism. If I went and told you, oh, I'm a Christian, and then I go ahead and mug you or beat you up or cheat you or lie to you, that's not really backing up what I'm saying, uh, claiming as a Christian. And that's one of the <coughs> biggest things people hold against the Christian church because many people who claim to be Christians don't really follow the Christian faith. An another thought I have in this direction is a lot of people who talk about no absolutes. We're supposed to keep our mind open and be tolerant of other people's alternative lifestyles. Yeah. Oh. Now, you know, if you think about that, that could be a good thing to do. Because if you think about it, let me see, people like Charles Manson or Jeff Dahmer or John Wayne Gacy, well, they were just living alternate lifestyles. So I don't see what's wrong with it. But then people will say, oh, but they're bad people. Well, that sounds judgmental. That sounds like an absolute to me. So you can't say there are no absolutes. You can't say we have to accept everything because there are absolutes and we don't accept everything. 
it's it's a matter of perspective. It's how you look at it. And that's, you know, like with that joke in the opening, it's, you have four different people, and they have four different ways of looking at the same exact thing. And we will always have different ways of looking at the same exact thing, and religions will always be different because people are different. People have different agendas. People have different ways of looking at things, and people just are different. All right. Gentlemen, this is going to be the final round. Uh, five minutes. Uh, would you? Would would? Okay, let's go to. A the last final round of five minutes each. If you need a little more time, we'll, uh, because of the shortness of the debate time, would both you guys like to extend to five to seven, go from five to seven minutes? Okay. Sure. Okay, we'll sure. go to seven. Sure. Um, religions are, in a sense, the same and are, in a sense, uh, different. That is um, a very broad statement, and uh, with my... Um, well, the debater is um, saying, I think, um, could uh, boil this down to actually less um, of, to a debate uh, than to um, a discussion on religion and its um, many um, aspects. Uh, it, from a scholarly and from a technical point of view, religions um, differ from the other fields in that we are dealing with something ultimately ineffable. And we're dealing uh, with um, um, someone or something um, to which we are responsible. And this um, inevitability, this sameness, uh, has um, made an effort in many instances throughout history going to interpretations of sending a mediator to Earth to help us. So I wasn't quite clear from. Um, um, my debaters, uh, my rivals' uh, point of view as to specifics uh, throughout the world. Yes, we are. Um, yes, we are responsible for doing something for the Creator in order to, to make the world um, a better place. Um, uh, but uh, this also gives us a great deal of responsibility to help make the world more holistic. This is where theology of culture comes in. Um, it, uh, my opponent made the point of um, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and um, others who have um, gone wrong. Uh, on the other, on the one hand, yes, um, uh, we have people out there who, for biological or psychological or social reasons, have committed crimes. Uh, does this uh, make them lesser human beings? No. Uh, should research? continue, um, uh, according to any religion, and certainly uh, to Judaism and Christianity, should research continue as to the causes of criminality? Is criminality uh, basically psychological? Well, in that case, um, we attempt uh, to um, see if we can rehabilitate the community, the home, the church, and other social institutions. Is criminality possibly biological? Uh, I believe Jeffrey Dahmer had uh, mentioned uh, to the police, um, you better lock me up or I am going to kill again. Um, that could be a genetic or psychological reason. So um, as um, a social worker um, once uh, put it, there are no bad boys, there are boys who commit bad acts. So. Um, uh, God presumably has created people who are good, but um, it's also created us uh, to, um, uh, or in any interpretation of any religion, to look more carefully at the psychological and biological uh, sources of criminality, and we also have to um, uh, ask ourselves uh, if uh, some of our concepts of criminality uh, may be um, uh, culturally based. Um, we would say that um, jaywalking uh, is not good. Well, uh, could jaywalking, might it not exist in a culture that is so small, a neighborhood that is so small, 
that we don't uh, have the concept of jaywalking um, if you have very, very few cars. Um, where I grew up um, in Chicago and in the inner city, um, we did look both sides, uh, both ways before we crossed the street. But we did not really have the concept of jaywalking because I counted 10 cars per day. And so you did go to the corner to cross, but if you crossed in the middle of the street, uh, no one, even if the police car went by, the police car was going to say anything. Uh, so in, in religions, we have to be careful of how to uh, define um, criminality, how to define what we mean when we say a person is committing a crime, how uh, we would even uh, um, be careful to uh, define how we would uh, commit um, sin or how we would uh, define a sinner. Thank you. Okay. Final statement, Paul. I have found this whole discussion interesting in the fact that, to a great extent, both of us have said the same thing, um, which is interesting since we're having, uh, supposed to be debating. Anyway, I've thought about this a lot. I've, It's been a, a thought that, uh, a concept that has bothered me for a long time. And I just thought it'd be interesting to put it out in the open for discussion. And um, God did create us good. Uh, but we, we preferred to not be good. Our human nature is to not be good. And the long and the short of it is, while religions are similar, they are not, they are not the same. And I have a hard time accepting when people say all religions are the same just because they want to sell off Christianity. It's an interesting concept and I, I, I I hope through this debate we've given you some things to think about. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, folks, that's right. Let's thank our speakers, everybody. Mike and uh, Paul, stand up. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to enter the question and answer period. Uh, I remind the audience again that um, questions end with a question mark um, and uh, so please raise your hand if you have a question and also um, if it's directed towards one specific debater please state whether it's a pro or con position any qu any questions yes uh, Tim okay you guys both claim that religions are the same but Paul you believe that Christianity is different you never quite explained what exactly a Christian is and why it's different than other religions. Can you please explain? In a, in a nutshell, a Christian is a person who believes in the God of the Bible, the Judeo-Christian Old Testament, believes that the Bible is God's inspired um, inspired word that he believes that Jesus Christ was born was born on this earth that he is God that he died on a cross and rose again on the third day as the perfect sacrifice for all our sins to me that is what makes a person a Christian and the difference being as I stated before is God did everything in the Christian beliefs. God did everything for your salvation and gives it to you. Um, another verse that is often quoted 
is the wages of sin is death, which is justice. And they leave off the next verse, which says, but the free gift of God is life through Christ Jesus, which is mercy and grace. Um, I've heard an acronym for grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. And that's the story. Christ came, died, he was the sacrifice, and our salvation was won for all people at all time, any people who will ever be. And as Christians, we go out, and in response to God's gift to us, we go out and do the good works that we do. Okay, and then I'd like Michael, if he could also comment a little bit on the on the same subject matter, if possible. Mike, oh, sure. you like? You know, just what what do you think a Christian is, and okay. uh, how yeah. it, you know, just any any just further. Right. In order to uh, define Christianity, I would have to take a step back to Judaism. Uh, in Judaism, there's a belief in one God, um, Yahweh, or the extent to which we can pronounce uh, that name, which we cannot really do so. Uh, in Judaism, um, as Golda Meir has uh, put it, um, I believe in the coming of the Messiah. In out, an outgrowth of that, uh, of, of Judaism becomes um, um, those individuals, those Jews and others, who believed that um, um, one of the Jews, uh, namely Jesus of Nazareth, was the Messiah, and that um, uh, the Messiah has come um, once and for all, and the Messiah will come again. So in Christianity, uh, there's a belief that, um, on the belief that God created the earth, and God did eventually uh, send um, uh, Jesus um, as the Christ. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Other questions? Questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to ask, um, uh, is it, I'm sorry, Michael or? or yeah, Michael uh, Paul, Paul, uh, Paul. Paul. What, what are some examples of moral absolutes that you believe that Christianity propounds because I can think of many examples within Christianity where uh, rules are put forth that are later abrogated, like in, in the Old Testament, David is allowed to eat bread, that, um, holy bread that should not have been touched. Um, Jews are not allowed, we're not allowed to eat shellfish. Um, even Christians are not supposed to drink, consume blood. And women are not supposed to address men in a church. It's, crystal clear that women may not address men in church. So what, I mean, how is that absolute? There are women pastors today. I mean, why, why, do, you, why do you make the claim that Christianity is, is based on moral absolutes? So the question is, is um, asking Paul to defend um, Christianity's uh, moral absolutes. When you refer to the Old Testament, that is the Jewish law, Christ as the fulfillment of the Jewish law and the fulfillment of all the Jewish festivals supplanted much of the law in the Old Testament. We don't do animal sacrifice because Jesus was the sacrifice. We don't do a lot of those other things because those things were put in place by God in, to keep the people on the, to try and keep the people on the right track until the Messiah should come. And now that we are in the time of the Messiah, it is supposed to be a celebration, not a strict yes and no. Um, Christian law, Jewish law, it, it's not an area I'm very familiar with but basically what I've heard said when people discuss this is when Jesus came, if you read in the New Testament, um, the word testament itself means covenant or agreement. So there is a new agreement between God and men starting with the Messiah, Jesus. And 
much of the old laws in the Old Testament, like not the dietary restrictions and a lot of that, were removed by the Messiah in the New Testament. And the reason I mention absolutes is there are things where, or let me define what I mean by an absolute. And by an absolute, I mean if you hit a situation or a circumstance, the response should be the same every time. If somebody breaks a law, they should be punished. Not, well, in this situation, it's one thing. In another situation, it's something different. Does that help any? Well, first of all, your, your response didn't address any, any of the examples I gave. In the two Old Testament examples, they were already abrogated before Jesus came. Like, God, God told David that he could eat the, uh, the holy bread. So that had nothing to do with Jesus. And the two of the other examples had to do with laws that were given after Christ. Where women, Paul says, this is after Jesus died, Paul says women are not allowed to dress men in church. And Paul also says you are not allowed to drink blood. So if you had a rare steak, you violated one of God's absolutes. So, so the questioner has a has a bit of a light voice, um, but so I just want to make sure that people can understand. He's asking about some absolutes that are written in the Bible. Um, uh, Paul said that um, uh, women should not address men in church, uh, and also after Christ was um, uh, introduced, uh, there was a law that you're not allowed to drink blood, which would forbid one from drinking or eating a, a rare steak. Uh, and so he's asking Paul to address those absolutes that are in the New Testament. I don't recall St. Paul saying anything about not drinking blood. Um, well, even in the Old Testament, women in the temple were subservient to men. To men. Um, and as I said, the law part is a part I really don't know that well. And I really can't answer your question properly because I just don't know. Uh, yes, uh, now, Doug, did you have a question? Yeah, I wondered, Mike, uh, you have some of these uh, uh, similarities here between the religions uh, uh, that uh, they uh, mostly have a Messiah or Redeemer. Uh, and I'm, I uh, don't know enough about Islam. Uh, what is this Mahdi uh, character? And uh, maybe you could elaborate on that. And uh, who's uh, this uh, Tirthankara in, uh, in Jainism, for example? How are they similar to Jesus? Um, Let me get my copy here. Okay. Uh, now, specifically, uh, you were asking about the... Uh, yeah, but for example, the Mahdi. And right. Jesus, how is he similar to uh, a Redeemer like Jesus? Is, uh, what all of these have in common in the most uh, generic sense, the basic sense, is that we have uh, God uh, reaching out to human beings, uh, specifically uh, in terms of... Um, someone who is uh, generally not human, someone who is um, beyond the humanity, uh, and the Mahdi is uh, uh, someone from God, someone from Allah, who uh, generally comes in uh, at the end of history in order to save or redeem us and to live with us. So uh, there is a category here of um, going from God to people, and uh, uh, I found uh, through my teaching and research that the term Mahdi, I, I hear very, very little. I'm not sure why, but uh, the Mahdi comes toward the end of um, history and uh, uh, fulfills uh, the wills of um, Allah in order to, um, to live with us and to regenerate history. 
Is there another part of your question? Yeah, if you have time, uh, who's this uh, Turth and Kara and James? Who's the Turth, Turth, Turth and Kara figure in Janus? I'm not familiar with it. Or her. Um, Oh, Trithankara is, uh, in Jainism, uh, there is um, the, uh, again, the messenger or the, um, the person sent by, um, uh, by the gods uh, in order, the Trithankara means bridge uh, builder or bridge um, uh, crosser. Um, God or spirituality in Jainism does not literally come into earth, but we have the bridge uh, crossers uh, as the Tirthankara uh, who are able to cross the bridge between infinity or between spirituality and us in the world. And uh, if you follow them or let them help you, they will then uh, allow you to um, see God or to have immortality uh, beyond this life. So it's um, um, a bridge. We cannot cross the bridge. We need someone who crosses the bridge for us and uh, who comes over to help us um, uh, gain immortality or, or to overcome yeah. mortality. Yes, Chuck, you had a question. Yes, uh, this is for uh, Paul, essentially. All religion is based on truth by revelation. Uh, you know, the guy said they were messengers. What makes you say that your prophets are messengers? In order for Christianity to be different, you have to say that your messengers or prophets were correct and all the others, because you're using the same process, were somehow inaccurate or an error or deficient. What makes your truth superior to all the other truths. I mean, what, how, do you, how do you decide which one is superior or correct and the others are incorrect? Um, deciding which religion is correct and incorrect is done on an individual basis. Um, as far as knowing... You told us Christianity was the... Right, you said, but you ended with how do you choose which one is correct or not? That's that's up to each and every individual. As far as my beliefs are, I believe that what is written in the Bible is the truth, because it was come, it came directly inspired to, from from the God I believe in, and that's how I define the truth. And it's God's word. It's infallible. It's well, it's up to the individual to decide which religion he believes is correct. Now, in the Christ, in the Christian, in the Christian religion, we believe that we go out, we do evangelism, we, in a sense, we plant a seed within your consciousness. Then the Holy Spirit, who is also God, comes along and gives growth to that, and then you have, then you be, grow and become a Christian. Now I know other religions have the same similar. Like we said, in essence, a lot of the religions are the same. They have the same basic kind of things. It's in the specifics in the. Uh, the true workings of the religions that the differences come in. Bob Lichtenberg. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, my question is for both uh, debaters, but mostly for Michael. Uh, these uh, religions all believe in a very different concept of God, so I was wondering if either of you could say what counts to you, to you as God. Uh, for some it's transcendental, some it's natural. For Confucius, he didn't believe in a God. He said he couldn't know God, but he would allow the Chinese to introduce all kinds of superstitious gods, mostly their ancestors. So, so what, what truly is God? And then, um, 
you know, the only, um, what counts is religion too, you know. Religion believes in God, so it all, a lot depends on uh, what is God. There's a definition to hear God, but this is just statements and, um, and uh, you know, I would like a rational argument, not blind faith, of what both God and religion are. What is God and religion, Mike? Um, God would be a um, primarily Western idea of a uh, person who has um, created the earth. You don't, you don't like that. There's a lot of Eastern religions. Uh, the Eastern religions generally believe um, in various gods, in a unity. They believe more in a social order. Um, certainly you cannot say that Nirvana is God, but in Western religions we uh, have the monotheistic uh, faiths from Zoroastrian uh, faiths through uh, um, Islam. So the, uh, the personal God uh, is generally in the West, whereas in the Eastern you um, have the oneness in uh, Brahman, but you also then have Brahma, Vishnu, and Krishna, um, and Shiva. Uh, which uh, uh, some would uh, uh, interpret that as monolithic uh, or, or monotheistic, others would not, I would not. Um, and uh, in most Eastern religions, you don't have a personal God, but rather uh, uh, social orders and uh, social moral codes. So you have, um, uh, in, in Buddhism, uh, you have spirituality in, in Nirvana. Uh, in Confucianism, and later Confucianism, you have the influence of the um, uh, gods and social order, uh, and those Confucianism, Confucianists who were influenced by Buddhism or Hinduism uh, may have syncretism. In Shinto, um, in Shinto and Taoism, by the way, there is um, a statement um, that intrigues me a lot. Um, at one point in Japan, I am born a Buddhist and I die a Shinto. So in one uh, lifetime, you can be a member of several religions. Um, um, and in fact, I recall that uh, when I was um, a child uh, in Chicago, I, uh, my grandparents and mother actually belonged to the Armenian and the Presbyterian churches. How they did that, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, I'm familiar with both religions and of course, in the United States and in the West, you don't do that. But um, in, um, in in some parts of the world, such as in Shinto, you can be born one faith and uh, die in another faith. Yes, the way I've always looked at it, your God, Your God is what motivates you in life. As a good generic definition of what God is. Dr. Charles Stanley, who I mentioned earlier, also said he doesn't feel that there's anything. Yeah, I know. There is no such thing as an atheist. Because the word atheist means no God. You don't believe there's a God. But everybody has some sort of God be it yourself, be it your money, be it fame, be it fortune, be it the God of the Bible, be it Allah, be it whatever. You've got to have some sort of God that keeps you going. And as far as religion, well, the, the, the religion, any religion is a form of beliefs that comes with whatever your God is. And definition of religion is very important in these, this country these days with all the separation of church and state and religious freedom things that are going on. It's a very important question. Religion, what, what is the definition of religion? Your religion? A religion is a system of beliefs in whatever God you have. Thank you. Uh, questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, no matter what God you select, in a followers of all gods, there are some people who are very fortunate, very well off, and other people who pray 
quelli un po' more, more e quelli un po' e ne stiamo in ambito sportivo e ne e ne so so what is what what is the role of God in this? So, uh, who who are you addressing? Okay, so what is the role of God with people with poverty or bad and fortunate? How do we deal with God because of the existence of poverty or bad? God decides who to help and who not to help. The one faithful is a very unfortunate, and other equally good faithful is very rich, very blessed. So uh, you're dealing with a discrepancy there. Yeah. Yeah. Who decides? How God decides? Um, in uh, most uh, religions, uh, as far as I could see, uh, there is um, an effort to overcome that. However, the um, there would be in the West, it would be um, uh, the effort to say that religion has to um, not be a captive of the church, but has to help people. In many um, Eastern faiths, there appears to be um, a discriminatory system uh, where the, there is the spiritually blessed, uh, and if you can overcome, um, for example, in Jainism, if you can overcome the flesh in Taoism, if you can overcome the flesh, you are a, member, you are a select. If you cannot, it means that um, um, you are part of a lower system. Uh, there's uh, some controversy uh, within Hinduism that uh, there's a caste system. Some people are capable of rising above and others cannot. Uh, we don't like to think that of that. The West, at least politically, we like to say that it's our the responsibility of the haves to uh, redistribute and ha have uh, help the have-nots. In some Eastern religions, unfortunately, there appears to be this to state a system, I'm better than you, you are better than um, someone else. And unfortunately, that's also um, true when it comes in Eastern religions of uh, discrimination against men, um, uh, against women, where some uh, in some religions, women cannot be spiritual, they cannot be clergy, although in, in the Mahayana Buddhism that uh, might not uh, be true because they would let uh, women to uh, be uh, clergy. Why or how God or any God does anything? Don't ask me, ask him. Uh, I couldn't tell him. In, in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, there are many places um, where Jesus says to store up riches in heaven rather than on earth. And that a lot of people who are well, well off here have their blessings here, but in the in the resurrection, they will be not as well off as others. Reminds me of a joke, real quick. A rich man dies and goes to heaven, and Saint Peter is walking him to his abode in heaven. They're walking down a main street. They turn down a side street. They see this big, huge mansion. St. Peter says, that's where your butler lives. And the man goes, wow, if that's where my butler lives, i got to see where I'm going. And they walk down the street, and they turn up an alley, and at the end of the alley is a little shack. And St. Peter goes, well, that's where you live. And he goes, what? My butler has this big mansion, and I get a little shack? And St. Peter goes, well, we did all we could with what you sent us. <laughs> and a lot of senses that's where it goes and to the Christian what God does for you what God's will is for you whether you're rich, you're poor, you're healthy you're sick, you're tall, you're short, you're fat you're thin it's God's will for me and I accept it as that okay uh, who hasn't heard had a, you haven't had a question yeah, what's the conception of uh, good and evil in Taoism? It's like a yin yang, are there equal forces in Taoism? The yeah. yin yang concept? Yeah. That's Taoism. In Taoism, you have the um, yin and yang, and you have the concept of the Tao. Generally, um, the technical interpretation of that would be that to follow the Tao, you have good. 
Uh, if you do not follow the Tao, you are not good. I suppose we would call it evil. But in uh, Taoism, uh, the very term Tao uh, means the way. And in fact, um, you, would, uh, you should not be shocked if you read the uh, Judeo-Christian scripture and what do you find? Uh, Jesus saying, I am the way. So you have the way in Christianity, you have the way in Judaism, you have the way in many faiths, and in Taoism, you literally have the word way. And therefore, if you follow the way, you're good. If you don't follow the way, you're bad. What do we say today in um, um, environmental sciences? There is the ecological way in which you do good. And if you abuse the ecology, you are not going that way and therefore you are doing as it were evil. Alright, who has not had a question? Uh, you have um, you have not had a question? I don't remember who talked about it, but they were talking about minds being tolerant and alternative lifestyles that we must sometimes accept and Charles Manson and John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer were mentioned. So my question is, okay, if we're dealing with that understanding of what is intolerable, would you not also include George Bush and Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld in who is intolerable based on the fact that, I don't know how many people in the world or the United States are Christians, if they made enough noise, they could send these three guys to the International Criminal Court for theft, murder, torture, and treason. What are your thoughts on that suggestion? <laughs> when I originally men mentioned that, I was trying <coughs> to make a point. I wasn't saying we should do that. I understand. I was trying to make a point saying the people who say, say that religions are the same, these the liberal religion people, are the same people who tell us there's no absolutes and that we're supposed to be tolerant of people's other lifestyles. And I'm just saying that um, criminals, live, they're just living an alternative lifestyle, but then people say, oh, but these people are bad. Everybody knows that. But that's an ab that sounds like an absolute. If people who do things that other people don't like are bad, that's an absolute because they're saying always in this case, well, these people are bad and should be thrown in prison. But if I'm being tolerant, you know, I'm just trying to show the the contradiction in what they're the what they're proposing for us that it doesn't always work. And as far as up. Using other examples, you can you can make examples forever. Well, I mean, just to follow up briefly, quickly, that's the ultimate opportunity for Christians to show there's one that we can sort of all agree on, right? At long last, is there not enough proof that they committed treason, torture, murder, and theft? I'm kind of waiting for Christians to kind of, at least on one thing, come to a consensus of where there's an example of we can't tolerate that because it's intolerable in the freest country in the world. Right. You Thank see my point where I I see your point. It's a lot to do with me, do you want to say? All right, uh, and who else has not had a question yet? Okay, Buzzy. I just wanted to know where the, you stood on creationism and, uh, and evolution on these two religions, the religions you were speaking about. Like, do you believe that uh, it all started with Adam and Eve and that's it? It's, it? We didn't have dinosaurs and things like that because people are trying to teach that in the new in the schools in the South. And uh, it's just curious where religion comes involved in that, in your perspective. As a Christian, of course, I believe in creation, or as it's defined these days, intelligent design. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I've often said, by the fourth word of the Bible, you can divide the whole world. In the beginning, God. You either believe that God was in the beginning, or you don't. 
And if you don't believe by the fourth word, the rest of the Bible, the 66 books and however many chapters, and, will mean nothing to you. What's the fourth word? In the beginning, God. Oh. If you don't believe God was there, it all falls apart. Uh -huh. um, an analogy I've heard for evolution it's like going up in an airplane, throwing out some bricks, throwing out some mortar mix, throwing out some water, and expecting it to hit the ground as a brick wall. It can happen, but it's not very likely. That's evolution. One more time. Uh, Mike Kazanjian, uh, do you believe in evolution, uh, Darwin? Right or wrong? Um, I can only answer that question by saying that Darwin does, um, of course, have uh, scientific uh, backing. However, if we look at uh, Teilhard de Chardin, the Jesuit thinker, he attempted to reconcile evolution and creationism. And just recently, there's been a controversy, I believe, in astronomy and astrophysics of uh, what is called bounce theory. Uh, we have not just one Big Bang, uh, which would uh, uh, support um, creationism, but is it possible to have ongoing Big Bangs and inflation theory? Uh, I am um, not sure that evolution and creation cannot be reconciled, and I think uh, uh, if you have an either-or situation, then you have serious problems, but um, I do not see a personal infinite God uh, being incompatible with the concept of evolution because that can also go into theological and philosophical panentheism. Uh, in panentheism, there is uh, an effort to reconcile theism and pantheism. I don't see a problem in that. You know. Uh, all right, uh, who else has not had a question? This yes, sir. Baloney. Uh, I want my three One full at a time, thank you. I demand my money back. Yeah. It's Victor's time, thank you. Okay. Oh, this is baloney. Victor is, has the floor. On Buddhism, uh, I know when after Buddha died and uh, Buddhism split into two, Mahayana, Himayana, one right. went to China and the other one to Japan. Use the, use the mic. mic. I cannot see a deity in there because there is he was not a deity. No, no. You got in here something like Arhat, Java, or what is that? A, a spiritual being with That's a spiritual being, and um, the Arhat. Wait, wait. Excuse me. You won't, you won't be picked up on the tape, Mike. Okay. Uh, in the uh, the uh, Hinayana believed uh, after right. Buddha's death, the Hinayana or the Theravada believed in the Arhat ideal which is more exclusive. The uh, Bodhisattva ideal from uh, Mahayana Buddhism um, believes in a more uh, egalitarian system. So, um, in, in fact, the history of the Buddha often uh, reveals a greater diversity than people think. People think, well, Buddha was an ascetic. Well, yes and no. Um, he had uh, more diversity than people thought. Yeah. What is the deity in this religion? There is no deity in Buddhism. So, so all religions, therefore, are not equal, because most of well, them. Well, they believe in a spirituality, a right? They believe in a spirituality in Nirvana, in the sense that there is something okay. beyond us that we cannot explain. There is something beyond us, which is not a personal God. But fine. fine. Nirvana is a state of being that you acquire to okay. experience to right. assimilation. Right. But that doesn't make you the, uh, uh, turn towards a spiritual being in order to acquire it. There is no spiritual being, but there is a spirituality. There is an ineffable, in, ineffable spirituality. You don't like the word spiritual. It doesn't apply to me. It just, I oh, can see okay. it. But, okay, I got the, another question. <laughs>
night and said uh, to the uh, priest or Jahir, let me drink here, sitting in a mosque, or tell me a place where there is no God. And that is an important question, where there is no God. That means whole universe is one God. And that's where we come to Hinduism. And we are all in that. We are part of the God. And uh, so it is for us to try to be human being, to be perfect, to be helping, to be caring, loving, and whatever we can, and the knowledge if we have to, to distribute that knowledge. But the idea that the, any particular label you put on something is going to do something for you, that's stupid. Okay? It's the idea you believe in, the work you do with them, or with, for, from yourself, you help somebody, you talk to some old lady, or you talk to somebody who is, a, who is a not so well versed in a, or anything you do, that's good. But to believe that because I believe in a Coca-Cola and I'm going to go to heaven, but if I believe in a Pepsi, I'm not going to go to heaven, that's a, that's a stupidest thing. I mean, the intelligent people can believe it. Well, the faith is gone. The world of faith is gone. Faith of knowledge, faith of hard work. I tell you, the guy, guy who is an engineer, he could not make, make, could make a lot more money and could live a better life than guy who's, the young, guy, young man when he's in a church. It's a very simple thing. More knowledge you have, the Google, Google boys have more knowledge and they are, they are more desk to do things done. They are rich. See, and when you are rich, you make more money. And when you make more money, you live a better life. And you have more, you have more influence. You, you, you make your world in your own image. See, so we all can, and my life is great. I go, I go to Catholic church, I go to Protestant church, I go to Senegal, I go to Buddhist church, I go to Hindu, I go to mosque, and doing something. It's so wonderful to see those people, you know, who feel come there in their respective places and feel good. Now, why any religious should have a problem with that? With that? If somebody, if a Muslim guy goes to a church and feels good, why should anybody else have a problem? Thank you. Are all religions the same? Um, I found the debate most confusing due to a lack of focus on the topic. Um, well, where do you start with such a big topic? Uh, well, at the beginning. Um, so, uh, yeah, my position is the religions are the same, but mostly different. Um, there's, there's so many differences. It's hard to see any similarities. Um, I think um, the only thing that uh, counts as um, a religion is a belief in a God and worship of a God. Um, I don't think a mediator is unique to religion because every field has mediators. Um, all fields have them. Uh, so God's the key, but what counts as God? I would say God is something intangible. Ideally, it should be argued for, but mostly it's not. It's accepted as blind faith. It's the only thing that gives people meaning in their lives and they're in the face of the horrible reality of death. A lot of people want to believe it. There'll be something more, but that, that need certainly certainly does not show that God exists. That's no argument for God. That's wanting God to exist. And that's a huge difference. That's a big, big difference. Needing God, wanting God. You know, what do I say about that? And, well, a lot of religions are, what are considered religions aren't really religions. Confucianism, Confucius didn't know God, you know, and uh, 
His religion was famous, his philosophy, his ethics, his social code was the story to become quite superstitious. Uh, Jainism, the goal there, <laughs> the goal of the, of the Jain is to fast yourself to death so you won't have to be reborn and exist again. How the hell is that a religion? Now, although that's not too different from Buddhism, <laughs> from Buddha. I would count Buddhism as a religion, because there's a God there, according to Buddha. It's just not the same God <clears throat> as the transcendent God of the West. It's a God who you're supposed to be one with. But then, when you're one with this God, as Michael said, you don't exist anymore. But most Buddhists could not accept that. They could not accept their deaths as real. And so they believed in a heaven. They made up a heaven for Mahayana Buddhism. And the, the small raft of Buddhism, they all became monks, you know, and, and tried to go to Nirvana. Um, so, so how are religions the same? They all believe in um, or worship an unchangeable God, according to me. Uh, but, but I don't think this is a very interesting or important point. The main point is, what can we should be what, what can we learn from religions uh, of the world? And um, I believe all religions have some truth. I even wrote an article on it, in which I specify these truths. It's a short article. Only four pages with pictures, but anyway. Uh, it'll be in my forthcoming book, too, a little longer there. But um, um, we, we should then start trying to beat around the bush, are they the same? It's a very difficult question. We should try and look for truths in all religions. Uh, because a religion is um, a culture's expression of um, God and what they think they can know about God. But unfortunately, it's not given to us to know about God. You know, we, we, we don't, we, we can't know that much, but can we know a little? Thank you. I'm going to go out on a limb tonight and tell you a little bit about why I'm a Christian how I became a Christian, and what my faith means to me now. The premise of it started when I was in college, about my freshman year, and I had gone into a very deep depression, lots of questions about the meaning of life, lots of questions about who I was, where I stood in the world, what happened and why and where I fit in in the society and yes I've heard about you know being raised a Catholic about heaven and hell and the eternal gospel and everything else but I was a practicing Catholic most of my life but I didn't really quite believe it because I also believed in evolution and the scientific faith and theory and everything else and then about I think it was back in 1981, around October, probably the third week, I actually, for the first time, heard and believed the gospel message, which was very, basically very simple. I am a sinner. I have committed wrong before God. And that the free gift of God's salvation was very simple. If you believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, you will believe. So I said well, at the time, it's called the sinner's prayer, which basically said, okay, God, yes, I'm a sinner. I have been done wrong before you, and that I accept your gift of salvation. And then all of a sudden, something inside me, I, I believe, had changed. I didn't ha I had a very hunger for scripture, to get the church, to learn about God and what specifically the, the what struck me very profoundly about Christianity was it wasn't about a set of morals or principles or a way of life to follow but it was about a relationship what the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross meant was that now you could talk to God 
he could talk back to you. It was a relationship. And yes, my first and biggest problem was, is this absolutely true, or am I living a lie? Or is it just some mental delusion? And this was given to me by one of my best friends, who's now in Boston, his name was Chris. And he kept challenging me on these questions. I did, for the next four, five, six, seven years, a lot of research. Is this stuff true? Does it make sense? And I remember very specifically reading a number of books. Josh McDowell comes to mind, for example, Evidence Demands a Verdict. He also wrote more Evidence Demands a Verdict. And I went on and studied many faiths and people, and it seems like everybody who went out to prove the Bible wrong come to find out that it was right. Over the years, uh, I my own walk with God has been a rather rocky one. And it's only been in the last five or six years when I got really involved with a place called Springbrook Community Church, involved with a small group Bible study that I regularly meet with on Friday mornings, that I really found the true meaning of this religion. And it, it isn't about a set of credos and principles. It's about a relationship with God. It's about you wanting to talk to him and him talking to you and, and talking back. And that's where the fundamental premise of every other religion is there. You can have a relationship with him. All you have to do is ask. That's why Christ died on the cross. And I hope I've given a little bit more enlightenment to you tonight. Yeah, hello everybody. <clears throat> my name is Doug Binkley, um, and um, uh, I, my good friend Mike Azani, and I had no idea until tonight. I think that he was a practicing Presbyterian, uh, so it's interesting to uh, find that out since he was um, appeared to be objective, um, uh, talking objectively about the differences of these religions. Um, and the subject uh, had somehow been, uh, our religion is all the same, uh, or are they different? Well, obviously they do have differences, and so he's expressed it as being the same, but with, uh, with differences. And uh, I maintain that uh, there's a considerable difference that d does set Christianity apart. Uh, it's been a problem for me ever since I thought about it very deeply. Um, and that is, uh, um, you know, it was also pointed out by a, um, a regular to these proceedings uh, named uh, Lee Hubble, uh, who passed away in uh, around 2004, I think, and he would discuss uh, a couple of very fundamental problems with Christianity. Um, the first of which is that uh, uh, you're supposedly given a, a tremendously disproportionate sentence of torture and pain for an eternity for, in many cases, uh, very, very small flaws um, that people have during their lifetime, uh, even by, you know, going by uh, Christianity's uh, strictures of what are sins. Uh, and this is a, a, a very disproportionate and unethical thing, which he pointed out on a number of occasions. Another thing that's uh, very disturbing is, and which is uh, apparently uh, unique to Christianity is this requirement that you believe that Jesus died for your sins. Uh, this is a fundamental logical problem because it's obvious that a, um, a God that's all-powerful uh, can say uh, that it is sufficient for you to beg forgiveness. If forgiveness is necessary, beg forgiveness directly to the deity rather than through an intermediary. And uh, unless the God is not all powerful, and there's some other principle that is above God that requires a sacrifice. Now, the problem with that is that sacrifice is clearly a very primitive instinct. It seems to be an instinct uh, from um, humans when they were much less sophisticated than we are today. We don't have animal sacrifice anymore, so why do we need a human sacrifice for the forgiveness of these sins? It is a logical fallacy and a big problem with ethics because um, there is a very little difference in praying for forgiveness directly to uh, a deity and praying through an intermediary or accepting the fact that God is not all-powerful and cannot forgive sins 
on his or her own or its uh, free election to forgive, but has to be on the basis of this extra arbitrary uh, criteria of praying through Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not telling that Jesus Christ is a human being or uh, a great teacher or prophet or whatever, but uh, in the list that uh, Mike uh, gave us here, we don't see any case of these other religions having this unique qualification for people being forgiven if they are genuinely uh, wishing redemption for their sins and wishing to be better people towards their fellow men, that they have this extra added burden of swallowing a whale of a stupidity, in, in other words, uh, a complete contradiction to logic and ethics. And we didn't see Jesus kind of recognizing this himself in Luke, um, if you go to uh, the uh, uh, discussion uh, Jesus has with the Holy Father in the Gethsemane uh, Garden, he asks, uh, sure, it isn't necessary that I swallow this cup, uh, meaning that he has to be sacrificed on the cross. There's a whole lot of other fallacies we have with it, but you can see that even the author of the third gospel realized possibly there's a contradiction there. Thank you very much. In the Bible? In the Bible itself, yes. I couldn't sleep tonight if I don't rebuke Paul. And I want to thank Tim because all this time I thought that uh, true believer and capitalism were not compatible. Yeah. But uh, Tim got it straight. Flagellum is an organelle. It's not a cell. And there are several cells that have this flagellum organelle. One of them is called Trichomonas vaginalis. Every female must know it. And another one is Giardia lambia. And another thing is that you cannot divide a cell. The cells divide themselves by binary fission. First, there is a nuclear in a cell. The chromosome that start unraveling themselves, they are the ones that divide within the cell. And once they are duplicate, then the cell separates into two. So, I think Paul is a great PC repair guy, but I don't think I will discuss evolution with a guy. <laughs> uh, uh, the other one, I think about the brain, I don't know. So, now that I got it off my chest, I yield my time to the next speaker. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, Linda and I just came from a play. Um, in the play, there was um, husbands and wives and the single people, and uh, someone was saying about um, all marriages are end badly. And uh, the guy who answered that says, well, no, you're just seeing what you want to see. And then the other one was, no, no, they do end badly. And then that was followed up with, don't confuse the music for the musicians. And it was like, oh, I like that one. And it's like religion. No, I am not a very religious person. Definitely believe in God. Much easier to believe in God or spiritualism, you know. But as I like, to, as I put it, more than the eye can see than it is to believe in religion. As I think that religion is politics. Okay. Religion is what happens when somebody has takes more than the eye can see and, code of, and puts it into practice. Suddenly it becomes politics and, and business. Yep. Politics and business. Now, just a few other ob few observations. Um, currently, current epoch, we have two factions of Arabs. 
of fighting each other tooth and nail over religion. The faith they practice Islam is about 800 years old, more or less. And no, 1,200 years old, excuse me, more or less. And if you think about where the Christians were when they were 1,200 years old, it was also in the place of great confusion. Lots of fighting between the Protestants and the Catholics. Terrible wars that lasted for decades. Okay. I don't know if this is what happens when people have a religion that's 1,200 years old before it evolves. The trouble is, is now we have nuclear weapons. About the question of when good things happen, when bad things happen to good people. Okay. Let's take this story. There's a fellow who lived a quiet life for about 30 years and then goes to answer his calling. In his calling, he heals the sick, he, he cures people, he teaches people to be humble, and at the end of his three years of practice, he gets crucified on the cross, dies a horrible death, and at the end yells up to his God, why have you forsaken me? And why do bad things happen to good people? It just happens that way. It's like, are you gonna, that's the way it's done. That's the way it goes. Um, my time's about up, so thank you. Okay, there's gonna be you and then the Oh, all right. Well, let's thank our speakers once again. Yay. All right, why do bad things happen to uh, good or bad people? Because of causality. Cause and effect. And it's as simple. You look for the explanation. It's in there. You know, uh, we, we make an intellectual leap into some more metaphysical explanations. Let's do that. I'm going to jump around. I came up this topic about 10 years ago. Felt a lot better ever since. Uh, I don't know why. If I'm putting together a cosmology, I need supreme power, uh, an intelligent uh, entity in my the world I'm designing. There's no compelling necessity, Paul, to incorporate that in there whatsoever. <laughs> if there is no evidence of it. Uh, I don't include it, very simply. Uh, this is becoming the worldview of a great many people in the United States. Atheism is now the fourth largest, quote, uh, religion in the United States. Uh, religion will give you a packaged belief system. You can be very easy. Uh, they hand it to you. Uh, you can then go for coffee, and you don't, you don't need to think any particularly any further because it's all given to you. Of course, this package belief system, absolutely none of it is subject to the standard rules of verification. We don't want to bother with any sorts of rules for establishing truth because that would be entirely too burdensome. You know, I mean, uh, why well, think guys like me come along and say, well, is there, how strong is the evidence? Do you have any evidence? And you say, well, no, we have faith. And we have revelation. Oh, revelation, by whom? Some guy that I will call the priestly class. Some guy comes along, and a lot of these began as campfire stories. You know, sit around, they didn't have TV. And the worst thing that happens, I'm sorry, Raj, the worst thing is, I used to think that you went to church or synagogue or wherever these things are on a Sunday or once a week, and, the, and you listen to some jamoke, and you think he's giving you good ethics, and let me tell you, he can be giving you a lot of do-wad biddy. And you got to watch out for these guys. And he ran into it there because there's very Christian ethics is an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You didn't know that it's teaching world religions. It's a very harsh judicial system. You kill the guy who killed. There's no rehabilitation. I suggest you go back and read your scriptures. Um, but watch out for the priestly class. You don't know what qualifications they are. They very authoritatively, they engage in theater. That's what they're doing. You know, put on some lights and music and songs and you know, and then, oh yes, 
Do you see that in any academic setting? Do you see anything like that going down in the colleges or university? That kind of theater that you have in the, in the places where they're giving you allegedly truth? Do you ever see that in a college? What's going on here? And I heard this Bible study. Don't study the Bible. Believe him, take a look at it. It's part of the Western canon, but don't study it. There's no compelling. It's a collection of 200 books, and who knows where. Jesus is about 268 phrases or statements, quotations, then you're done. Um, let's see, I got something here about the secular world. We got through. Now, regarding evolution, I gave a lecture here. I still have it, it's about 200 slides. I didn't know about the squid. This is a new one to me. Uh, no, I'm sorry, there's probably no theory or scientific, you know what that bothers me about this is? It's scientific illiteracy. Come on, are we still at it? Are you, you gotta be scientifically literate. You know, now wait a minute, I got, we're going out all night. Oh, no, I forgot that the rules don't apply. No, they don't. I, I'm a sinner. Good, you oh, By the way, you were talking about sins, Doug. If you look in the Bible, there's 200 types of penalties in the Bible, depending on what you did. There's even paintings of this they've done. Like if you cross jaywalk, you get thrown in the... The lake of fire. <laughs> All right, Charlie. You can look these up. All right, I'm here. I don't want to get thrown in the lake of fire. Oh, you go. You go to hell. And now our esteemed speakers are going to have their. You're going to get punished. Roman lake of fire. I have to say that I've had more fun uh, tonight than I usually do in teaching philosophy and world religion. This is the kind of audience that I like in my classes, so if you want to sign up, please do. Um, I want to thank two people tonight, um, uh, Paul Racino, uh, my fellow debater, and I want to also thank the person who uh, did a, mag a magnificent job as moderator, Karina Shashang. Um, the, <laughs> the, um, and I also want to uh, thank Karina for having informed me of this debate and having asked me to participate. I did have a lot of fun. Um, the topic tonight was, are all religions the same? Um, part of the um, handout that I gave out has a very interesting point to me, uh, the theology of culture. Uh, and one day perhaps someone will talk about um, articulating theology of culture, which uh, the main point there is not only are all religions the same, but uh, does a religion have something in common with a secular? Uh, lots and lots of uh, books uh, written about that. Um, for example, can religious people share something in common with agnostics, non-theists, and atheists? The answer, according to theology of culture, is yes, because if we look at uh, uh, culture or secularity as um, some connection with God or the mediator, then culture does have a sacrality to it and a morality to it. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased to have been uh, part of the discussion. It uh, taught me a lot. Thank you. Sounds like a good talk for Christmas. <laughs> Sounds like a good talk for the Christmas season. Oh. <laughs> Paul Racino. Very quickly, I'd like to address some of the things that were said in the rebuttals. Um, our, one of our first speakers made a very common mistake. Uh, Christianity is the religion. Catholic, Protestant, Lutheran, Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever, those are denominations of the Christian religion. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we talked about, someone mentioned about small flaws and it's disproportionate. In the Bible it says if you are guilty of any part of the law, you are guilty of the whole law. So there is no differentiation between small sins and big sins. There is no such thing. 
All sins require the shedding of blood for forgiveness. The Jewish sacrifices in the Old Testament had to be done over and over and over and over and over again because it was an imperfect sacrifice. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice once for all. And animal sacrifice is not practiced because it's not needed anymore. Blood sacrifice. In Luke, it says that Jesus asked to have the cup removed. At least in the Bibles I've read, he asked, may this be removed. Not that he felt that it could be removed, but then he said, your will, not mine. There are 66 books in the Bible, Charlie. All right. I think you said 200. 66. I don't really care. We all wonder about what's going to happen to us after we die. Eventually, we will all know without question, and then it will be too late. Oh. 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 Get what's up, Karina? Too late, Charlie. Man. Too late. Get what's up. And that is from the College of Complexes. Thank you. No, they started at 8.40. I mean...